In this video, we're taking a look at the entire history of Destiny 2 PvP since its launch through the lens of the most powerful weapons of each era. Some of these weapons instantly became top of the meta picks when they were introduced, while others only rose in popularity after receiving a buff, or in some cases only because other competing weapon types got a nerf. So get yourself some popcorn, sit back and relax as we go on this nostalgic journey through the most meta-defining weapons of Destiny 2's PvP. Starting off in the very beginning, we have the original lane peeker, the Mida Multi-Tool. In early Destiny 2, primary weapons killed much more slowly than they do today, and the team play meta basically came down to strictly holding hands next to your buddy. This way you could safely team shot your opponents down one scout rifle bullet at a time from safety. Mida was a top pick in this era because of its ease of use and amazing strafing speed thanks to the bonus mobility. It also paired nicely with the Mida mini tool if you were into SMGs. Today, the Mida is actually one of the best scout rifles once again, although most maps don't really have enough range to let you exploit playing from those further distances. Better Devils was considered the best hand cannon in early Destiny 2 by most players, perhaps only contested by the Sunshot and the Old Fashioned. Back in the days of static rolls, this hand cannon came with the perk Explosive Payload which extended its effective range and created more flinch on your opponent's screen when they got hit. In vanilla Destiny 2, primary weapons did much less damage compared to today, leading to some lengthy duels. Any abilities like Explosive Payload that let you get a shot ahead in the duel could easily help you win these gunfights. While Better Devils is now Sunset, the power of Explosive Payload still lives on in hand cannons like the Fatebringer. In Year 1 of Destiny PvP, special ammo actually didn't exist yet. You had a primary weapon in your kinetic and energy slots, and the special weapons of today were actually relegated to the power ammo slot. For this reason, many players would pair their scout rifle or hand cannon with an auto rifle in the energy slot. Uriel's Gift became the go-to pick for a majority of PvP players, especially those on console. This pairing led to a nice coverage of the mid to long range, but it did open you up to some trouble for those very close quarters fights. Today, 450 RPM auto rifles aren't considered very good options, and you should probably avoid them. The Antiope, hmm, Antiope? However you want to pronounce it, it was without a doubt the most popular SMG of early Destiny 2. With a high zoom sight and kill clip, you could absolutely shred Guardians if you could control it. The only catch was that this weapon was fairly hard to obtain, so many dedicated players took quite a while to get their hands on one if they ever even did. The Antiope remained a pretty popular pick throughout the first year of Destiny 2, even being paired with one of the top pulse rifle options coming up soon on our list. These days, the legacy of the Antiope lives on, but in the form of the 600 RPM Trials SMG, the Shayera's Wrath. The Dire Promise was a reward from the old Faction Rally event for Dead Orbit Loyalists. Initially, it seemed like more of a PvE option since it rolled with triple tap, but PvP players quickly realized that the combination of high aim assist, a lightweight frame, and 150 RPM created an extremely deadly hand cannon in the Crucible. Dire became a go-to option for many top PvP players, especially those on PC. When compared with competitors like the Midnight Coup, it felt smoother with noticeably less recoil which made landing those 4 hits very easy. Upon its reintroduction with random rolls in Season of the Worthy, Dire reclaimed its position around the top of the meta. However, it was also one of the casualties of Beyond Light when 150s were transformed into 140s and it lost its lightweight frame bonus as well. Today, it's still a great hand cannon, but not quite as popular as it was compared to its glory days. Veteran players out there will remember a very special weekend in Destiny 2 history when the Crucible turned into a giant game of laser tag. Some players might even have a special emblem to commemorate their participation. Prometheus Lens absolutely rocked the Crucible when it was first introduced, incinerating Guardians in a fraction of a second. Although this weekend of laser tag only lasted a short while, it will forever be remembered in Destiny 2 history. These days, the Prometheus is actually a pretty strong option once again, especially with the introduction of Trace Rifle's scavenger mods. In the Warmind expansion, Bungie greatly changed the pace of Destiny 2 in many ways. The Graviton Lance was changed from firing a 3 round burst like most other pulse rifles to only firing a 2 round burst, while keeping the massive final bullet featuring extra damage and no damage drop off. Kills with this weapon would also cause the target to explode into mini Nova Bombs that would track nearby enemies. After the buff, Graviton quickly became a top meta option for PvP, especially when paired with the Antiope D to cover essentially all engagement ranges. If you played a session of competitive PvP back in Season 3, it wasn't uncommon to face a whole team of Graviton Lance users. Today, the Graviton has felt a little bit forgotten. The time to kill is still unchanged from Year 1, while many other pulse rifles have power crept right by it. The other exotic pulse rifle challenging for the top of the meta during Warmind PvP was the Vigilance Wing. 
This beast of a pulse rifle fires a 5 round burst that absolutely shreds an enemy if you can land your shots. Vigilant Swing featured a fast time to kill, decent range, and the onslaught of bullets that heavily flinched your opponents in a duel. Perhaps the only significant downside was the lack of a clean sight aesthetic since the ornament Vigil of Saint-14 hadn't yet been introduced. Just like the Graviton, it was also commonly paired with a particular SMG, more on that one coming soon. In today's meta, the Vigilant Swing is still an incredibly strong weapon featuring a fast time to kill with tons of forgiveness in the headshot department. Following the pulse rifle trend, we have sort of a pulse rifle hand cannon hybrid in Crimson. This odd hand cannon fires a 3 round burst and was certainly more popular with controller players than those on mouse and keyboard because of the way that the gun model blocks your view while you're shooting. Crimson's health granted on a kill, ability to auto reload after a headshot kill, and insane flinch output made it a very popular choice. Today, it's pretty much the same story. It's very popular for controller players, especially on console, but not quite as popular with the mouse and keyboard crew. In Warmind, there was one particular SMG that rose to prominence, the Ikelos SMG. This thing was a common pairing with the Vigilant Swing to cover both the close and medium ranges effectively. You have to remember that this was back when shotguns were still in the heavy ammo slot instead of requiring special ammo, and melees required 3 hits for a kill instead of 2, so SMGs were a very popular pick to cover those close quarter battles. The Ikelos SMG was easy to use and also paired well with the Dire Promise for players who preferred to use a hand cannon over a pulse rifle. In today's meta, the Ikelos is still a pretty decent pick, but it's been overshadowed by great SMGs like the Shayera's Wrath and the Multimach. In Season 3, Bungie released the first ever pinnacle weapon locked behind the competitive playlist, the Redrix Claymore. Newer players may only know of the Redrix Broadsword, which was the easier to obtain yet better version of the Claymore released in Season 4. The Claymore was a true trophy weapon. Season 3 competitive PvP was a bloodbath, with lost streaks, win streaks that got reset every time you got to 5, and overall many less points being awarded. Players able to reach 2100 glory for the fabled ranked earned the coveted Redrix Claymore a weapon owned by less than 1% of the population according to Light.gg. The Claymore featured a brand new perk called Desperado, which allowed you to shoot bullets nearly twice as fast after getting a headshot kill and reloading. It's led to some amazing PvP clips over the years. Today, the Claymore and Broadsword are both sunset, but Desperado lives on in the Messenger Pulse Rifle which is still dominating PvP lobbies. The Forsaken expansion completely shook up the entire PvP landscape. Special ammo was now a thing, new exotics were added that we could tinker with, random rolls on our weapons got reintroduced, and the lore got expanded. One of the saddest moments in Destiny history was when we saw our beloved Hunter Vanguard, K86, meet with his demise at the hands of Aldrin Sov. For lore enthusiasts, this was a very tragic moment, but on the other hand, PvP players rejoiced as they had finally gotten access to Cade's signature hand cannon, the Ace of Spades, which hadn't been seen since Destiny 1. It had amazing stats, best in class range, basically every perk that you could ever imagine, and it also came with Memento Mori, a perk which loaded some high damage bullets after a kill and a reload. This was extremely powerful, as one single kill would enable you to kill your opponents in just one headshot and two body shots, or sometimes even just two headshots. Understandably, Ace got nerfed multiple times, but even still, it almost always remained towards the top of the meta. Today, it lives on as arguably the best hand cannon in the entire game. Forsaken opened the floodgates for special weapons of the Crucible with a reworked ammo economy. Now, instead of requiring heavy ammo, every player could run around the map with shotguns, snipers, and fusion rifles full of ammo that they spawned in with after every death. Perhaps the most popular shotgun in early Forsaken was the Dust Rock Blues. This precision frame shotgun had some incredible range, and because it sat in the kinetic slot, it was a great pairing for the next weapon duo up on our list. Dust Rock could also roll with full auto, which at the time provided an insane increase to the shots per minute. A god roll on the dust rock was a terrifying thing to come across in PvP, especially since this was before a long series of shotgun nerfs. Today, the dust rock is sunset, but its spirit lives on in the brand new Fractithist, which is an amazing shotgun. During Forsaken, Bungie added two very special hand cannons to the competitive loot pool, Luna's Howl and Not Forgotten. Luna's had more stability but less range and was available to players who completed the quest and reached 2100 glory. Not Forgotten was the true trophy weapon of Season 4, requiring you to first obtain the Luna's Howl and then climb all the way up to Legend rank at 5450. Where Luna featured more stability, Not Forgotten traded that in for more range, and a lot of it. It became the highest skill reward weapon in Destiny 2's PvP. These hand cannons were special because like the Claymore from Season 3, they also brought a unique perk, 
Magnificent Howl. Landing two headshots in a row would hugely beef up the damage of the next bullet, allowing you to land just a body shot to kill the target. If you played your cards right with the perk, you could even two-tap an enemy at 180 RPM for a blistering fast time to kill. This duo has been nerfed a few times, losing the potency of Magnificent Howl as well as being changed from a 180 into a 140. They are still usable today, and Not Forgotten is actually pretty good, but nothing compared to its glory days. With Ace of Spades being in contention with Lunas and Not Forgotten as the best hand cannon, players needed a great energy slot shotgun to pair with our favorite exotic from Kate 6. And the boss from the Hollowed Lair Nightfall had the perfect solution, the Mindbender's Ambition. This shotgun featured an aggressive frame, meaning that it dealt the highest damage per bullet and it also fired faster after landing a kill. With amazing roll potential featuring the OG version of Quickdraw, Mindbenders became the go-to shotgun for PvP enthusiasts. Many friends of mine developed some absolute degenerate level gaming chairs while grinding out kills with their god roll. Today, Mindbenders is sunset, but it remains the only aggressive frame shotgun to still have Quickdraw and it's an amazing performing shotgun in PvP, assuming you don't need to be at maximum power level. Forsaken also ushered in a new era of pulse rifle enthusiasts. There are actually quite a few great ones that I'll combine here for a single entry in our list. Namely, we're looking at the Bygones, Go Figure, and the Blast Furnace which came to us a little bit later in Black Armory. Each of these pulses could deal some serious damage from the back of the map pretty safely with a very forgiving time to kill. For this reason, they were deemed dad rifles by many people in the PvP community, which is a meme that has really stuck around into the modern days. All three of these pulse rifles could land some amazing rolls and were quite a force on the battlefield. Although they are each sunset today, they are still great choices in quick play especially with a god roll. Later on during the Forsaken era, one of the most iconic weapons in the history of Destiny made a big return, the last word. This cowboy hip firing hand cannon could straight up delete an enemy in only 3 bullets while firing in a blistering fast 225 RPM. It was a naturally great pairing with a sniper rifle in particular since a sniper could manage the longer lanes and the last word was great at annihilating enemies up close. Initially, it was considered overpowered on mouse and keyboard and a bit underwhelming on controller because controller players felt the recoil was a little bit too hard to control. Over time, this would flip with a rework of how the gun functioned, aiming to double down on its hipfire design. Today, the last word is still considered a top choice on controller but substantially harder to use for mouse and keyboard players, a point of contention in the community. If ridiculously lethal hand cannons weren't your thing, Bungie introduced a pinnacle grenade launcher that would shake the PvP community for a long, long time, the Mountaintop. Unlike most other breech-loaded grenade launchers, this one fired its projectile so fast that it was nearly instantaneous for the payload to reach the target. This created a playstyle where guardians would jump up high in the air with their Mountaintop to dish out some huge chunk damage to enemies below and then they'd swap to their primary weapon to clean up the kill with just a couple of easy hits. This would become a huge problem in the community, especially with the next weapon on our list. Mountaintop did finally get a huge nerf, and it isn't seen too often today, especially being Sunset, but its legacy will never be forgotten by veteran players. Imagine a weapon that could clean up a sniper rifle body shot or a blast from the mountaintop, and then go on to absolutely destroy the entire rest of the enemy team. Hmm, sounds a little bit like the Recluse. This SMG was the pinnacle reward of Season of the Drifter, and it was also the perfect pairing for the mountaintop. This combo obliterated PvP lobbies for months and basically became the most complained about loadout in all of Destiny's Crucible. However, the Recluse didn't rely on Mountaintop to be good. It was actually a great pairing with basically any other weapon, and once you got a kill with any of your weapons, the bonus damage from the Recluse would kill your next enemy faster than you could blink an eye. Over time, it received a big justified nerf, but it's still a pretty decent SMG today if you can hit your shots, although options like the Multimog have mostly taken its place. For basically the entirety of Destiny's lifespan, hand cannons have been the number one weapon archetype in the meta. Players have always sought out better and more effective hand cannons to slot into their builds. Spare rations got introduced in the season of the Drifter and it immediately got the entire community grinding for it. It was a lightweight 150 RPM hand cannon with some of the best perks and stats ever seen on this archetype. Unfortunately, it was also locked behind the abysmally low drop rates in a very tedious and unengaging activity, the Reckoning. Some players managed to dodge the RNG madness and settled for the curated role featuring Explosive Payload. In this case, the benefits of Explosive Payload were enough to offset the lack of the effective range. Although it's sunset now and it lost some of its rate of fire, Spare Rations is still an amazing hand cannon for quick play modes. 
Sometimes the introduction of a catalyst or a rework of a weapon has unintended consequences. This is definitely the case with the Lord of Wolves. Originally, this pulse rifle shotgun hybrid fired 5 shots per burst and then it ramped up to 10 after a kill. It had significantly more range than a regular shotgun, but it required more bullets to get the kill. This meant that you had to be pretty accurate with your aim to get the initial kill. Bungie changed this though to where you could activate Release the Wolves on demand and reap the benefits of the extra damage. This instantly made Lord of Wolves busted. Suddenly, this weapon could delete a super at SMG ranges with the click of a button and an almost trivial aim requirement. Understandably, the alternate mode got nerfed, and the availability of special ammo has also gotten reduced, so this has made the Lord of Wolves much harder to use in today's meta, but it's still actually a pretty good option. Sometimes I question if Bungie actually understands their own weapon meta. Apparently snipers weren't oppressive enough in literally all of Destiny's lifespan, so they needed a new entry in their ranks which would make sniping even easier. What's the number one problem of sniping? Well, if you miss, you lose one shot of special ammo. Revoker, on the other hand, fixed this issue with its pinnacle perk, Reversal of Fortune. It would generate ammo out of thin air whenever you missed. This sniper rifle was a huge problem in the Crucible. It was extremely forgiving, easy to use, and missed shots came with almost no risk whatsoever. Later in the early days of Trials of Osiris, players would camp the furthest corner of the map until one sniper shot finally connected. I'm really glad to see this one sunset. It single-handedly ruined the Destiny ammo economy, but you're still going to see it from time to time if you play the survival playlist. In the Season of Opulence, players got access to the Awestringer, a kinetic 140 RPM hand cannon with some of the craziest stats ever seen on this archetype. With Rangefinder, the Awestringer could challenge even the effective range of Ace of Spades, which had been a top contender in the range department ever since Forsaken. Unfortunately, the Austringer was also competing against the faster shooting 150 RPM hand cannons like the Spare Rations, which gave it a bit of a hard time to compete in the meta. Nonetheless, many players enjoyed the sleek bottle and the high stats, and it was personally one of my favorite hand cannons. I was very sad when Sunsetting took this one away from us because I felt like it could have been one of the best hand cannons in the game after all the changes. Of course, no hand cannon is complete without an amazing sniper rifle to pair with it. And in the Season of Opulence, Bungie gave us arguably the most popular sniper in the history of Destiny 2, the Beloved. This sniper was absolutely oozing with aim assist, fired at 90 RPM, which was the preferred archetype of the time, and it could roll with amazing perks like Snapshot and Quick Draw together. Beloved's Time in the Sun was also during the era just before sniper rifles got their aim assist nerfed based on their zoom stat. So the low 40 zoom scope on Beloved allowed you to land some easy headshots whether you're at point blank or across the map. It's my favorite sniper of all time in Destiny and one that I dearly miss, but I do understand why they wanted to change it. It still does feel amazing in quick play even after the nerf. There's basically never been a time in Destiny's history where sniper rifles weren't a top pick in the weapon meta, and this gun is no exception. Don't be fooled by the fusion-like appearance though, Arantel definitely was a sniper rifle back in its prime. Before the nerf, fusion rifles had a very high damage floor, meaning that something like Arantil could theoretically pick up a kill at nearly infinite range. Of course, it was pretty difficult to manage the recoil from so far away, but every once in a while you could absolutely snipe an enemy from downtown. Obviously, this warranted a nerf, and today it's the precision frames that are actually the better ones for long range kills, but Arantil was a really fun weapon back in its day. At the beginning of Season of the Worthy, 600 RPM auto rifles got buffed, while Hardlight itself got another specific buff. Hardlight's range was theoretically infinite, and bullets got a massive damage increase after reflecting off of walls. Players quickly found out that holding left click down a lane was an efficient option to deal chip damage to basically everyone close by. This was a big problem. Hardlight eventually got rightfully nerfed, and today it's basically just a decent auto rifle. Season of the Worthy brought us a returning weapon from Destiny 1 which would become a staple of the Crucible for quite a long time. I'm talking about the Felwinter's Lie, the unique aggressive frame pellet shotgun with the intrinsic perk called Shot Package that made pellet spread more consistent. With absolutely crazy perks available like Quick Draw and Opening Shot, players could already envision Felwinter's as a perfect shotgun. It instantly became a top pick for PvP players, except there was a problem. Felwinter's Lie became completely unobtainable in the next season, Season of Arrivals. Once again, FOMO, fear of missing out, spread across the community. This was yet another harsh reminder that Bungie rarely lets you skip a season without missing some amazing loot. Eventually, Felwinters became available to everyone again, and the shotgun apes rejoiced. But soon, Bungie decided that aggressive frame shotguns with quick draw were too powerful, so they changed the perk to surplus and then later also nerfed the range. 
it's never had quite the same feel ever since the changes, but it's still a pretty good shotgun. In Season of the Worthy, Bungie wanted to shake up the meta once again and they massively buffed the 600 RPM auto rifles. Unfortunately, one of the strongest auto rifles was locked behind a giant wall of RNG. Just like spare rations, the Nong Hunger was a weapon that came from the Reckoning. People didn't quite pick up on the strength of kill clip on this auto until the next season, Season of Arrivals, when it became readily available to be focused from the Umbral Engram system. With the right roll, it could easily dominate quick play lobbies due to its lethality and forgiving nature. While it might not have been the strongest choice for pure dueling, many players enjoyed the leniency that came from the high rate of fire. Understandably, 600 RPM auto rifles did get nerfed, but they still are decent choices in the Crucible as of today. When questioned why they played Destiny 2, most players would answer, for the gunplay of course. Our next weapon though joined the party in Beyond Light, and it might be hard to find in your collections. Based on how many gunplay lovers made this option back when it first came out, it's hard to not call it a weapon. Turning yourself into an actual piece of artillery just to get easy team wipes was such a dominant tactic that it basically invalidated every other hunter subclass. If you agree that this still needs a nerf today, let Bungie know by shatter diving that like button and also subscribing to the channel. In Beyond Light, Bungie wanted to shake up the hand cannon meta by removing the 150 RPM lightweight archetype and converting the 110s into 120s while also giving them a massive range boost. Players quickly picked up on the fact that they were massively overbuffed, allowing for some huge chunk damage at crazy ranges. With any kind of damage boost, 120 RPM hand cannons could kill in just two headshots, allowing for skilled players to go on massive kill sprees. Unfortunately for the majority of the community though, one of the best 120 RPM hand cannons was completely unobtainable, the True Prophecy. Your only alternatives were the Steady Hand, which was very difficult to get a good roll on as it only dropped from the Iron Banner, or Criminal's Dagger if you happen to have one from an old Iron Banner. This once again caused a lot of FOMO in the community. Sturm was also a popular choice as an exotic, but the legendary 120s were much tougher to acquire. Over the next couple of seasons, 120s got nerfed multiple times, but they still remain a valid choice even in today's meta. After a season of FOMO for True Prophecy, Bungie decided to introduce a new king of 120 RPM hand cannons. Many players were hopeful that they could finally attain a spicy roll on a 120, though those hopes may have been cut short because this hand cannon was gated behind a massive wall of cheaters, lag switchers, and degenerate strategies in the Trials of Osiris. I was fortunate enough to get my hands on a god roll of the Adept version pretty quickly and I immediately fell in love with it. With Rampage, you could two-tap enemies, and it was just a clean feeling 120 with massive range and enough stability that it almost felt like a 140. With the nerfs to 120 hand cannons, Igneous has fallen slightly out of fashion, but it's still a nasty hand cannon able to perform well in basically any type of PvP. I also want to make a shout out here to the bottom dollar, which is a very popular pick especially for those who didn't have a good roll on the Igneous. The Redrix Claymore was the original high impact pulse rifle featuring Desperado as its pinnacle perk. In the season of The Chosen though, Bungie thought it would be a great idea to put Desperado on a randomly rolled Trials weapon. So they reintroduced the Messenger from Destiny 1 as a legendary, high impact pulse rifle able to roll with Desperado along with a randomly rolled 3rd column perk. It wasn't a big surprise that the Messenger instantly became the best legendary pulse rifle in the game. While Hankin is may still be easier to use, some players are willing to put in the effort required to master the Messenger and become a scary opponent on the field. Even today, it's one of the highest skill, highest reward weapons in the entire game. In Season of the Chosen, Bungie thought it was about time to give us another famous hand cannon returning from Destiny 1, the Palindrome. This 140 RPM beauty has some of the best base stats in the game and can roll with Rangefinder to push out the damage falloff to the extreme. It's one of the best feeling, best looking, and easiest to use hand cannons in the game. For a while, having a primary weapon in the energy slot was considered undesirable, but these days we have so many options like the Chaperone and the Eye of Soul to pair with the Palindrome that that concern is really no longer a big deal. If you want a smooth shooting, incredible hand cannon, look no further than the Palindrome. Imagine taking the last word, stretching it out a little bit, sprinkling some crazy range on top of it, and seasoning it with a hefty amount of aim assist. What you get is a feisty hand cannon sniper rifle hybrid, which has single-handedly revived scout rifles in PvP, the Dead Man's Tail. This is a 120 RPM lever-action scout rifle that can hip fire with almost perfect accuracy at 150 RPM thanks to the catalyst. Suddenly, players had to deal with the lethality of a 0.8 second time to kill scout rifle from basically anywhere on the map. The hipfire nature of Dead Man's Tail also allowed for a faster strafe speed and more awareness during your duels. 
this new king of scout rifles became especially dominant on mouse and keyboard and was a popular pick to pair with a grenade launcher like a modern day version of the recluse mountaintop setup. Although it's been recently nerfed, many top players still consider it to be perhaps the strongest primary weapon in the entire game. The Multimach was actually an Iron Banner SMG all the way back from year 1. With the introduction of random rolls in Forsaken, this one never really got its time to shine until pretty recently. Only a few select players gave the original Multimach much of a try. In hindsight though, it might have actually been pretty oppressive all the way along. This is especially true for Titan mains with the Peacekeeper exotic boots that could terrorize lobbies with a seemingly bad weapon. The Multimach was reintroduced in Season of the Chosen with random rolls. While the harsh nature of RNG may have created even more rage in the community, one thing was for sure. With Iron Reach, Killing Wind, and the Model 8 site, the Multimach can get some absolutely crazy range. It also occupies the 900 RPM lightweight frame, which has an extremely fast time to kill while also buffing your movement speed. This has led many players to crown it as perhaps the best submachine gun in the game. To great disappointment within the community, Bungie thought it would make sense to invalidate essentially over half of the game when releasing the newest expansion. And so it happened, with Beyond Light, the majority of our weapons all got sunset. Many PvP players to this day still miss the original version of the Antiope D. Fortunately however, Season of the Splicer brought us back a new and improved version of the Antiope in the form of the Shayera's Wrath SMG from Trials. It has some elite perks, best in class stats, and access to adept mods which push out its effective range up to about 29 meters. Honestly, it's almost more like an auto rifle than an SMG, and if you happen to get a roll like this one with Kill Clip, you're going to be melting guardians from quite a long distance. With the pellet shotgun nerfs in Season of the Lost, slug shotguns have risen in the meta, with Chaperone being one of the most popular options. But its story in Destiny 2 actually started all the way back in Forsaken. Unfortunately for our protagonist, not many of the players were willing to sacrifice the ease of use coming from a pellet shotgun in return for only a few meters of extra range. The strength of slug shotguns has actually not changed all too much over the years. It's really just that pellet shotguns got nerfed over and over again, which gave a lot more breathing room for slugs. These changes give you more time to line up your shot while alleviating a little bit of the pressure needed to hit your opponent the second they show up. In the Season of the Lost, slugs became much more popular. And within the archetype, the unquestionable king is the sleek and stylish chaperone. Not only does it have the best range of all slug shotguns, but when the roadborne perk is activated, you can shoot even faster and map your opponents from some incredible range. The final installment in our list is the Vex Mythocrutch. I mean, a uh, Mythoclast. This fusion auto hybrid is a true menace in 6v6 modes and is quite effective in trials as well. The totally fair and balanced 100 aim assist and 100 recoil direction make it really easy to get a decent kill time with the Mythoclast. But this wasn't always the case. When the Vex first made its reappearance in Destiny 2, it was, well, kinda bad. The stability and range felt awful and the linear fusion mode took forever to charge up a shot and also the catalyst made basically just no sense. Now though, it got a huge buff in nearly every way which has led to a massive resurgence in use, to the point where it's about to get a nerf to smack it back down. After you get a kill, you get bonus damage and more stability to extend your streak. If you get two kills, you can activate the linear fusion mode to potentially kill three more opponents with just one shot each. The power of the Mythoclast has basically invalidated the entire auto rifle archetype, even challenging the 600 RPM submachine guns. In the Season of the Lost, whatever loadout you intend on playing, you have to account for the sheer stopping power of the Mythoclast. Let me know in the comments, what weapons would you add to this list? If you like this video, maybe consider subscribing if you haven't yet. And if you enjoyed this one, I think you'd also like my video ranking every Destiny 2 playstyle into a tier list. It's the video on the top of your screen and also linked in the description.